All right, Shalom. This is Nahalia from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Wakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. And through the spirit, I want to go over Genesis, the second chapter. All right. And um, go through the precepts and go through the breakdown through the spirit. Uh, Lord willing, this is edifying. And I'll just head right into it. I'm right, going to start at verse one. And it reads, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, Yahweh Bashim Awashai ended his work, which he had made. And you have to keep in mind that. In the first chapter, all right, God is Allah Hayyim, all right, and that is Yahweh Shai and the angels, all right. So the Most High is not mentioned in the scriptures by name until you get into the second chapter, all right. So let me go here, all right, and we'll get the word for God in the second chapter, all right, and it's Allah Hayyim, all right, it says rulers. Judges, divine ones, angels. So that is Yahweh Shai and the angels. All right, for those who don't know, who are not aware. All right, for those who may be new. All right, Yahweh is the name of the one they ignorantly call God. Yahweh Shai is the name of the one they ignorantly call Jesus. Baha Shem is in the name in Paleo Hebrew. So Ba is in, Ha is the, Shem is name. All right, Raka is spirit, Kodash is holy, Akiam is brothers, and Akwat is sisters. All right, so I want to continue. And for those who may be new, Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians, as they are called today, are the children of Israel. They are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And their descendants that are scattered amongst all nations that, make, they, that may look like other nations, but they go back to the house of Israel according to the seed of their fathers. All right, so I want to make that clear before we go through the breakdown, just in case there's anyone who's new and listening. All right, so I'll continue at verse three, and it reads, and Allah Hayyim blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. All right, and again, Allah Hayyim is plural. Allah is God, which means power or judge. When you add the yum to it, it makes it plural. All right, so Allah Hayyim, powers, judges. All right. Now, I'm going to continue, and at verse three, it says, and God, I'll read it verbatim, blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in he had rested from all his work, which Allah Hayyim created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now, when you go into the Lord God, all right, that is when you start to see the name of the heavenly father. Because ultimately, all the credit goes back to the Most High, Yahweh. All right. And the Yahweh Shai and the angels are an extension of the Heavenly Father. All right. So the Lord made Yahweh Shai, which is why he's known as the only begotten son. And then he created everything else. All right. As a matter of fact, since we're on this topic, I want to just grab a scripture to go into that. All right. So this is Colossians, the first chapter. And I'm going to jump down to verse 13. Colossians 1 and 13 reads, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible power, the firstborn of every creature. All right, and this shows you that Yahweh Shai was created first. He's the only begotten. And what that means is he's the only one who was created by the Most High himself. Everything else was created by Yahweh Shai at the instruction of the Most High, whose name is Yahweh. All right, verse 15 again reads, who is the image of the invisible power, the firstborn of every creature. Here it is. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible, 
whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. All right. So you have to understand that Yahweh Shai is the firstborn of creation, meaning he's the only one that was created by the heavenly father himself. And everything was everything else was created by Yahweh Shai and the angels at the instruction of the one they ignorantly call God, whose name is Yahweh. All right. So that's the understanding of the difference when you see God and then you see Lord God for those who may be new. All right. So I want to go to verse four again. And it reads, these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord power made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord power had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. So at this time. There was no rain, all right? A dew came from the ground and watered all the vegetation. Okay, so continuing at verse 7, it reads, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now, this is where Christianity um, throws a lot of people off. Because you have to remember, in the first chapter... When you get down to, let's get down to it. Bear with me. My computer's a little slow. When you get down to verse 20, it says, And Allah Hayyim said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. All right? Moving creatures that have life it includes people. So people were made in abundance. All right. And I want to make that clear because when people get to chapter two and they see the man who was formed from the ground, a lot of people assume that this was the first man ever created. All right. And it's not true. And we'll get some scriptures to back it up. All right. Now, I want to also jump down to um, let's go here to verse 26. And Allah Hayyim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So you can see that in verse 20, every moving creature that hath life includes humans. All right, because we are creatures that have life and we move. Right. When you get to 26, this is the order being established. All right. Verse 27 reads, so Allah Hayyim created man in his own image and the image of Allah Hayyim created he him and male and female created he them. So I want to jump to that to show that male and female man, humans, if you will, were created in the first chapter. So when we get to verse seven in the second chapter, again, it says, and the Lord power formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. This is talking about the understanding. All right. The knowledge, the wisdom and understanding of Yahweh by Shema Shai. All right. And we're going to prove that. So let's go to second address. The third chapter. And I will start at verse one. In the 30th year after the ruin of the city, I was in Babylon and lay troubled upon my bed. And my thoughts came up over my heart. For I saw the desolation of Zion and the wealth of them that dwelt at Babylon. And my spirit was sore moved so that I began to speak words full of fear to the Most High and said, O Lord, who bearest rule, thou spakest at the beginning when thou didst plant the earth and that they and that thyself alone and commandest the people and gavest a body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thine hands. And didst breathe into him the breath of life, and he was made living before thee. And thou ledest him into paradise, which thy right hand had planted before ever the earth came forward. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way, which he transgressed, and immediately 
thou appointest death in him and in his generations, of whom came nations, tribes, peoples, and kindreds out of number. So you have to remember when it says that the Lord breathed into him the breath of life and he was made a living, he was made living before thee. That goes into the understanding. All right. Because again, we just went into the first chapter of Genesis and it clearly says that male and female. All right. Everything that moveth and have life was created already. All right. In the first chapter. So this shows you that Adam was given the understanding, knowledge and wisdom. And that was the breath of life. All right. I want to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 17. And I will start at verse five. No, I'll start at one. All right. It says, the Lord created man of the earth and turned him into it again. He gave them few days and a short time and power also over things therein. He endowed them with strength by him themselves and made them according to his image and put the fear of man upon all flesh and gave him dominion over beasts and fowls. They received the use of the five operations of the Lord. And in the sixth place, he imparted them understanding. And in the seventh speech, an interpreter of the cogitations thereof. Counsel, a tongue and eyes, ears and a heart gave he them to understand. Withal, he filled them with the knowledge of understanding and showed them good and evil. All right. So when you go into living, all right, that breath and him becoming a living soul. That goes into the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. All right. And this is why when we go into Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, Moses says this. All right. Bear with me. All right. So we're going to go towards the end of the chapter. Verse 19 reads, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy power and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord, Yahweh Shai, swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob. To give them. All right. So when you understand what it means for a man to become a living soul, Adam in particular, that deals with the knowledge, wisdom and understanding. All right. This is why it's considered life. All right. As a matter of fact, let's go here. And I don't want to move too fast, but I want to grab another precept. This is Baruch chapter four. And I'll start at verse one. This is the book of the commandments of Yahweh Bashim Shai and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Turn thee, Jacob, turn thee, O Jacob, and take heed of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. All right, so again, when we go to Genesis, the second chapter, our Christianity has done a terrible job of breaking down the scriptures to a point where people believe that Adam is the first man ever created. All right. When they read verse seven and when you understand it with the proper context, that is the knowledge, wisdom and understanding being given to Adam. And he became a living soul before the heavenly father. All right. Because wisdom is known as the breath. All right. As a matter of fact, let me see if I can. Grab that, Lord willing. All right, so we're going to go to All right, the Wadi Haubashimel shot. This is Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter seven. And I want to jump down to verse 25. So I just grabbed a point. Wisdom of Solomon seven and 25 reads, 
No, let's start at 4, 24. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath of the power of the Most High, and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore can no undefiled thing fall into her. So that's what Adam received in verse 7. He received wisdom, understanding, all right, the law, statutes, and commandments. All right, so when we move forward to verse 8, it reads, And the Lord power planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. All right, so you have to understand the entire planet was known as Eden, not just the garden. All right, the garden is planted eastward in Eden, which shows you that the entire planet was a paradise. Because when you go into the word Idan, all right, that definition says pleasure, the habitat of man after the creation, sight unknown. All right. Let me go down here. Jesenia's Hebrew child lexicon says delight, pleasure, a pleasant country. All right. So this was all made to be paradise. All right. It says the various opinions as to the locality of the terrestrial paradise are stated and discussed. All right. So this was all known as paradise, the entire planet. All right. But Adam was planted eastward in Eden. All right. And that is the land of Israel as it's known today. All right. Yashar Allah. So continuing on. I want to let's go back to verse eight. And the Lord power planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. All right. Because, again, the land of Israel is the Lord's favorite piece of land. All right. As a matter of fact. This is Second Ezra chapter five, and I'm going to jump down to verse twenty-three, and said, "O Lord, that bears rule of every wood of the earth and of all the trees thereof, Thou hast chosen thee one only vine, and of all lands of the whole world, Thou hast chosen thee one pit, and of all the flowers thereof." one lily and all the depths of the sea thou hast filled the one river and of all builded cities thou hast hallowed zion unto thyself all right so zion is the lord's good and pleasant place the one piece of land that the lord has hallowed unto itself all right and this is why it is the land of yasha allah all right yasha allah uh the prince he is a prince of god the chosen people of the lord all right, because when you go to verse, let's continue, verse 26, and of all the fowls that are created, thou hast named thee one dove, and of all the cattle that are made, thou hast provided thee one sheep, and among all the multitudes of people, thou hast gotten thee one people, and unto this people whom thou lovest, thou gavest a law that is approved of all. All right, so that one people that the Lord lovest, that is an inheritance to the Lord that the Lord has hallowed for himself. He's also placed the land that he has hallowed into their possession. So before it was called the land of Israel, it was known as the garden eastward in Eden. All right. And this is why this is beautiful through the spirit. All right. When you really look at the sons of God, all right, before they were called Israel, Yasha Allah, they were the Adamites. If you can receive it, all right, because Adam, there was one man, Adam, but there were people that were known as Adam. All right, real quick. This is Genesis chapter four. And I will jump down to Slakia, Genesis chapter five. And I want to jump down to verse 1. I'll start at the top. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that Yahweh Shai, or Allah Hayyam, created man in the likeness of Yahweh Shai, made he him. 
Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. All right, so you have the Adamites. But of the Adamites, there was one special Adam that was chosen. All right, and he was given that understanding. But these were the sons of God before they were known as the Israelites. All right, but that's a that's a lot of meat for another day. I just want to uh, go back to chapter two. And if anyone wants me to go into it uh, more in depth through the spirit, you know, just leave a comment and I will. Um, but I want to knock out the second chapter. So we're going to continue at verse nine. And it reads, and out of the ground made the Lord power to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. All right. You have to understand that the fruit, the forbidden fruit, as Christianity calls it. All right. Was knowledge. It was knowledge of good and evil. Really, it was knowledge of evil, because at that point in time, the Adamites only knew good. All right. They were only given the tree of life and they were forbidden to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All right. And we'll go into that, Lord willing. In, in the third chapter. So, Lord willing, um, I'll do a breakdown of the third chapter. But I think I'll cover it as well on, on this chapter as well. I'll hit a couple precepts to break that down. But it is knowledge, all right? So, contrary to popular belief, Christianity teaches that it's a literal fruit, and it wasn't. That a literal snake talked to Eve, and that's not the case. All right, when you actually go into the scriptures, all right, it's knowledge. She was given knowledge of evil. And she gave that knowledge of evil to Adam. All right. And Adam was corrupted because of it. So let's continue back on topic at verse 10. And it reads, and the river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison. That is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah when, where there is gold. Now Pison is actually the Red Sea as it's known today. But you have to remember that this is before the flood. So when you go to maps, things are a little harder to discern for most people. All right. As far as where is what and what is what. All right. If that makes sense. But again, in verse 11, the first is Pison, which is the Red Sea. That is it which can pass at the whole land of Havilah. And Havilah is known as Saudi Arabia today all right where there is gold all right and the gold that of that land is good there is delium and the onyx stone all right real quick i want to look at delium just for edification and it says delium is a fragrance gum perhaps amber others pearl Delium. Let's go to the lexicon. Precious article of merchandise mentioned amongst gold and precious stones. All right, it says which latter consists of white grains and scales and is elsewhere compared to hoarfrost. So apparently it's some goodly material. All right, we'll just keep it at that through the spirit. All right, so continuing, verse 13 reads, And the name of the second river is Jehon. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. Now, this is the Nile River as it's known today. All right, now going down to verse 14, it says, And the name of the third river is Hidekel. That is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth is, and the fourth river is Euphrates. So Hadikal is actually the Tigris River, as it's known today. And the fourth river is Euphrates, as it's still known today. All right. And again, those are the four rivers. So the Python, again, is the Red Sea. All right. The land of Havila is Saudi Arabia. The second river is Jihon, which is known as the Nile today. The third river is Hadikal, which is known as the Tigris today. All right. And the fourth is the Euphrates. Verse 15 reads, and the Lord power took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. 
And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. All right. Now, again, this goes into the knowledge of evil. All right. It says the knowledge of good and evil. All right. And this is why um, we're going to get some precepts on this to show you that this is going into knowledge. All right. It's not a literal fruit that was eaten by Eve. All right. And then given to Adam. All right. It was knowledge of wickedness. All right. Continuing in verse 18, it reads, and the Lord power said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. So first, before we do that, before we go to this and break this down, I want to deal with the tree of knowledge of good and evil. All right. So first, we're going to get some precepts. All right, because knowledge can be eaten. All right. In the spirit. All right. Knowledge is consumed. It's consumed by your mind or your heart. All right, and I'm going to break. Matter of fact, I can use this same one. So first one I want to grab is Hosea chapter 10. And I'm going to jump down to verse 13. All right, and it reads, You have plowed wickedness, you have reaped iniquity, you have eaten the fruit of lies, because thou didst trust in thy way in the multitude of thy mighty men. So what you see is knowledge, all right? Even knowledge of wickedness being likened unto food, all right? Let's also go to Proverbs, all right? So we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 4, and I'm going to jump down to verse uh, 17, all right? And it reads, for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. All right. And this shows you that the scriptures describe consuming information as eating as well. It's not just literal food. A lot of scriptures are parabolic or dark sayings. All right. And I just want to go here real quick. Proverbs 20 and 17, 17 reads. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. All right. And deceit ain't uh, a dish that you can go get from some restaurant. All right. It's actual deception. All right. And it shows you that the scriptures describe consuming information, good or evil. All right. Taking hold of information, good or evil, is likened unto eating. All right. When the Lord told Ezekiel to eat the whole roll, it wasn't. That he was literally going to eat a roll, but he was going to consume the scriptures, digest it, all right, and then go teach the house of Israel. All right. So that's how we understand Genesis, the second chapter, when you deal with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All right. It's not a literal tree. All right. It's wickedness. Because when you go through the scriptures, men are known as trees. All right. And that's a whole nother subject in itself. But men are known as trees in the scriptures. And there's many examples of that. Um, one of them that comes to mind. Is in Mark. So. Let me jump down to it. All right, so when you go to Mark, the eighth chapter, and I'll start up to get the context. But when you deal with trees, all right, when it deals with Adam hiding himself amongst the trees, it's not literally hiding amongst literal trees. It was hiding amongst the other nations. All right, roughly paraphrasing. All right, so this is Mark chapter eight and 23. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. 
and he was restored and saw every man clearly. So this shows you an example of men being considered as trees. All right, Isaiah 61 also says this in verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord power, that he might be glorified. All right, so when you see these scriptures and you go into Genesis, the first chapter, a lot of, well, the first and the second chapter and the third chapter, a lot of things are, especially in the second and third chapter, a lot of things are compared to literal things that, that are really in the spirit, all right, when you deal with the knowledge of the tree, all right, and the fruit that was eaten, all right, that is likened unto the knowledge of wickedness that Eve ate and that she gave to Adam, not literal fruit. All right, as a matter of fact, since we're on the subject of trees, and I want to jump down to verse 30, uh, verse 5, all right, and it reads, Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and his bowls were multiplied, and his branches became long because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. All the fowls of heaven made their nest in his bowls, and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. Thus was he fair in his greatness, in the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his bows, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of Yahweh by Shemel Shai envied him. So this shows you that trees are also compared, men are also compared to trees. All right. It's not just the um, literal trees. All right. When you deal with Ezekiel, the 31st chapter, this is talking about nations all right and adam was made fair all right he was made so fair that the other trees in the garden envied him all right for his beauty all right and this envy lives on today all right this is why negroes latinos and native americans are still envied in this world today all right even though they're at the bottom because again it goes back to the blessing that was given to that chosen line of people. All right, so going back to Genesis, the second chapter, 